Hey everyone, today we're going to be discussing one point localization using Leica's Captivate survey software. Um, it's been a while since I've done any videos, so well overdue. I've got plenty of ideas, so be sure to uh, subscribe to my channel so that you'll be notified when uh, I release a new video. So uh, we're going to talk about one point localization and it can be done a couple different ways. We can do quick grid using quick shift or we can use create coordinate system. Uh, I'm going to go over both options so you can learn how to do both ways and apply it to the scenario that you're dealing with. Um, so a good example or a scenario would be um, you created a job, you set up the project on the state plane grid, and uh, you created a, a base point for your base and rover using navigated or over any point. It's an autonomous coordinate. It's close to state plane, but it's not on state plane, northing, easting, and elevation, but it's close. So you probably did a uh, static observation with your base while you're doing your RTK survey, where you can uh, send that um, Rhinex file to Opus and get a, um, a Ropus report. So uh, let's take a look at the job and project was set up again on, on Grid North. This one was set up in Idaho West at 83 with a geoid 18. And let's take a look at the points. Here's our navigated base station. It's on 51. You can see the RTCM reference is pretty much the same, or well, it is the same, 9055, 9055. But we've got our Opus report in, and it gives us a new coordinate, which is, here's a, uh, the comparison. It's off uh, pretty much about 13 feet horizontally, and about three feet in the verticals. So what I've done is I've gone in and I've created a point, I've called it Opus, T typed in the coordinate system, uh, and the elevations for the um, for the opus and if we take a look at it um, this is zoomed out here's our survey a couple of control points set around the perimeter all right so here's our opus we want this base station to be here and then as this base station slides to the northeast 13 feet all our control is going to slide 13 feet to the northeast as well. So we have our survey. Um, and so now let's go ahead and hit, uh, let's learn how to do it through create coordinate system. So if we're doing one step, that would be ideal for a transformation where we are doing a shift and rotate, which is ideal for a 5,000, 5,000 coordinate system type of a deal um, where you want to bring GPS to the ground. You have some rotation. Um, that's ideal for that. You can do a one step. If I actually click one step and say, okay, um, I can use a one point, but basically what it's doing is it's, um, its options are based on true north. Well, this survey was done on grid, so we are going to handle this through classic 3D. So classic 3D is uh, used for your state plane coordinate systems. So we're gonna say, okay, let's name this. So I'm gonna just call it one point. Let's call it Basin Rover. Look for our example. Uh, use one point localization method. Yeah, we wanna check that on because that's what we're doing. If we did not, we would basically be applying multiple points. We only want one point. We wanna shift that. Uh, navigated 51 to the opus point. So we're going to say OK. And the transformation name is, is continued forward. Height mode, ellipsoid. So yes, we're going to use ellipsoidal. We have our options, orthometric or ellipsoidal, but we're going to apply a geoid, which is the geoid 18 in this case. So uh, in order to get orthometric heights, you are um, going to use a geoid and ellipsoidal heights to com combined. So we're going to continue with ellipsoidal. And our projection is still the same. Idaho West, GO818, no model for the CSCS. Okay, so uh, 
our WGS84. Here's our navigated point. If you remember, 51 in our TCM, that's your um, reference triplet for the um, for 51. So we're going to say 51, and then we've got a local point is Opus that we type that we manually typed in. So you need a GPS point and you need a imported point or a hand entered point. Local heights, we have options. We're going to either use the local point height, which is the Opus elevation, or we're going to let WGS create an elevation for us. But in this case, we do know the elevation. It came from the Opus report. So use local point height is the option we want. So we say, okay. And this is your Cartesian coordinates conversion. And we're going to say, um, we're going to, this is again, this is our uh, coordinate system. We're going to store that. Now when I go back to 3D Viewer and I zoom in, you can look at this a couple different ways. Zoom in and zoom in and zoom in. And obviously you can see that when I click this, RTCM 51 and Opus are all the same point. And if you don't believe me, let's take a look at the coordinates. So now uh, here's your Opus report. Here's your reference 11416. 11416 So now we have shifted over the entire survey over uh, the 13 feet to the northeast and all these points were shifted that movement. Now we are all these points are on state plane. All right, so let's discuss another scenario. All right, so this example, um, we did a survey. The boundary was uh, set up. We uh, located a bunch of uh, control and monuments for the boundary on uh, State Plain. However, one of the controlling monuments um, on the right of way had a published benchmark. And this benchmark was um, used on a prior survey, so we wanted to carry the vertical datum forward. Um, so the datum on that previous survey was on any uh, NGVD29. However, we're doing our survey on SmartNet, so we know we're so-so on NAVD88. Uh, the only way to know how close we are to NAVD88 is obviously to tie into a benchmark um, but when we're surveying it, we come over to the points. Let's take a look at the overview of the whole project. So here's the project. Project is set up on state plane. All the control and monuments tying in, tying in well. Um, however, this this control this monument this bound was had a published elevation. So we need to do a one point localization. Again, we're on state plane grid. Uh, um, bearing system, um, but we're on NGVD29. So we need to do a one point localization where we're going to hold a horizontal and um, elevation, but we don't have, we're not, we're not changing our horizontal um, coordinates. So what we can do is we're going to take 300 because that's the known TBM, and I'm going to create a new point. And all it does is create a mirror image, uh, 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 an exact copy uh, copy of the coordinate for 300. And TVM. And we know that the elevation is about 8 tenths higher. So we're at 288.96. And let's say that's the elevation that was on the design plans or the published elevation that we're going to uh, use on this survey. So we're going to say store. If we look at the coordinates, the coordinates are identical for horizontal northing and easting, except for vertical, we shifted up about eight tenths to get to uh, the um, 29 datum. All right, so again, all we know on this project, all we're doing is we're shifting it vertically. That's the only thing we want to do. Well, unfortunately, there is no just shift vertically, so that's why we do a kind of a copy of the uh, GPS coordinates for that monument and now we're going to classic 3d and we can just call this 
um, one point TDM. One point localization, check that on, say okay. We're gonna use an ellipsoid. Again, the projection is uh, on, in this case, Massachusetts mainland at 83. The geoid we're using is geoid 18. We are going to move 300 to 300. So 300 horizontally is zero and TBM is the vertical shift. We're going to use the local height because we want to use the elevation that's on the published datum. We say okay. This is a Cartesian coordinate shift. There is no difference. It's not shifting X and Y. So, but it is shifting it in the Z. So we say store. Let's look back. View and edit datum. Again, here's the uh, coordinate. You can see that nothing has changed. When we change our coordinate system, anything that is manually entered or imported cannot change by the coordinate system. However, the elevations and coordinates can change as you change the coordinate system. So if I look at the coordinate system, view and edit properties, coordinate system, we are now on that one point TBM. And now the vertical, all the survey is based on this elevation of um, 300, point number 300. Okay, so we discussed how to do a one-point localization using uh, create coordinate system in the two previous examples. But we're going to talk about quick grid now as an alternative method. Um, basically, the best way to describe how these two differ from each other is uh, maybe you had a, um, when you did your RTK survey, you did an autonomous um, base point for your base, and you set up your project on state plane and you went out and you shot a, an existing monument you brought it back to the office you got the data from that existing monument you plugged it in and now you use create coordinate system to shift the RTK survey from one of your control points to a known coordinate but let's uh, use the scenario that you are holding a data sheet in your hand uh, or uh, there's a control point on an adjacent survey that you did where you tied already into the uh, interstate plane and, and ABD88, you feel really good about it, uh, and you basically want to use that control to build your new survey from. So uh, the example is the project set up on state plane, as we did in the previous example. Um, we have a uh, navigated or an autonomous uh, um, base uh, coordinate for your um, uh, for your basin rover and now uh, we have a either a one of two uh, both options would work or um, we have a control point from the Jones survey that you did um, and when you did that survey you you, know, you did an eight hour static observation, you feel really good, you were tied in, uh, you don't need to do another opus, this project is tied down, and this would be your control for this survey. Or you have, you're holding an NGS data sheet, and um, you have a known, you type it in, uh, you have a known uh, coordinate on uh, NAT83 and uh, NAVD88, and you're going to tie into that. So. You're setting up this job uh, before you actually do the RTK survey. So now you want to tie in. You can you can run around and measure. In this example, you could go ahead and measure. You know, throw out some control points now or later. It doesn't matter because when we shift this on one point localization, um, these control points are going to shift whatever it needs to shift so that you know you are tied into this coordinate or this coordinate whatever one you're trying to hold so we're going to go to quick grid and we're going to pick a quick shift and shift an existing coordinate system to a measured one point by measuring one point and in this example is by measuring so you are going to measure it and it's going to do the shifting for you so it's the same results just whether or not you shot it before or you shoot it now. Okay, so we're going to say okay. All right, so your project is set up in uh, Idaho West, NAT 83, GO 818. You say okay. Uh, 
this screen you basically have user entered. So I can take the data sheet right now and I can type in NGS Monument, whatever the name is, the Northern Eastern, uh, the, the Ortho Height, um, or you uh, were giving a control point from a previous survey on the, the butter, like I said, and you can type it in, or you can just type it in early, like I did earlier in the example, so from the working job, and I have these two options. Um, I'm gonna shoot Jones, so I'm gonna say okay. I walk up to this control point I find um, out in the field. I'm gonna use a geoid. I am going to not, I'm gonna uh, ignore the local heights and use, uh, I'm, I'm gonna use the local height on Jones 18, sorry. So we're not gonna use WGS84 because right now we're on autonomous, we're not tied into the project. So we wanna hold this 2612.12, uh, which is the elevation on the Jones control. So we do not check this box. Say okay. All right, so now we are in the screen. So we are, I, don't, I am not tied in to, uh, on the simulator to um, a, a RTK uh, receiver. So I cannot physically take you through the next steps, but I can explain that what's gonna happen is we're going to basically call this a point number and you can call it 1800 you know, GPS, all right? whatever you want to call it. We'll call it GS1800. So we're going to walk up to this point that we found in the field and we're going to hit the measure button. And what it's going to do is going to match 1800 GS to Jones 1800. And it's going to force all your survey to, to, mat, to match this known coordinate. So when I hit measure, which I cannot do in the simulator, I get a, I don't, I'm not connected to a GS sensor. So after you hit measure, you store the point and you uh, are asked to name your new coordinate system. Obviously our current coordinate system is Idaho West Nat 83. We are not gonna call it that because we are not overwriting the state plane uh, coordinate template. We're gonna create a more a local coordinate and this may be the Smith property so maybe we say um, Smith, and we call the we call the coordinate system Smith, and um, you store it. Now, if you decide you want to go back and you walk over to this NGS monument and you come over to this and you say NGS, whatever you want to call it, you can call it whatever number you want. You want to call it one, call it one. Uh, when you hit measure, it's going to match. Sorry, I got to I got to basically do it this way. I can turn around and say, uh, this is known as point one. So it's going to move one in NGS to be the same coordinate and elevation. And if you decide you want to call it Smith as well, um, it'll say you cannot have the same name twice. So uh, you can overwrite it or you can um, call it something else. Uh, whatever you feel more comfortable with holding, whether you feel you know holding the NGS monument or the previous control that you set up on the adjacent or the abutting survey. So that's the difference between quick grid and coordinate system. Both of them work with SmartNet, Basin Rover, whatever way you are doing your survey, uh, they work, um, they work uh, the same way. Um, again, quick grid is when you are doing, uh, this, you have the data and you're doing it on the fly. Um, and query coordinate system is you shot it, now you're reviewing the data, what to hold, what to shift. Um, you'd actually uh, plug in and chug in all the information. Quick rate is supposed to be a faster way to tie into a project kind of on the fly, um, where create coordinate system is uh, something that comes um, on the, after the survey is done and you want to um, apply a shift. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up. If uh, um, Subscribe to my uh, site so that you can get updates as I release some new videos in the coming weeks. Thanks again.